Howdy folks, Max Mergen here, oilfreefund.com. It is 5 p.m. on May 20th, 2013. Massive tornadoes raking across the Midwest. No words to describe what went through more Oklahoma. It will go down as one of the worst tornadoes ever and one of the biggest ever. At one point, the tornado was nearly three miles wide. Okay. Here we see a picture of more. At least two elementary schools took a direct hit from the tornado. Again, it will go down as one of the worst tornadoes ever. There's the school, and there's another tornado. Um, deadly catastrophic tornadoes are headed into Moore, Oklahoma. The tornado at one point was over two miles wide. Estimated 30 square miles were damaged. Okay. Now, I've been studying the weather situation for a while. And it's pretty darn well established that the technology exists to alter the climate. They call it geoengineering. Uh, those of us who have a less hopeful perspective on it call it weather warfare. Here we see Secretary of Defense William Cohen in 1997. Uh, Secretary of Defense said in Department of Defense news briefing others are engaging in a type of eco-terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves okay? Well believe it or not the U.S. has been studying this for decades which prompts the question why do we have tornadoes like this when we have the technology to manipulate the climate okay? I'm here in Climate Viewer 3D now. Just wait for that to load up. And you can see all of these green and black circles here. Notice how some of them have a white ring around them. Here in the middle here where there's all this red and blue, that's our tornadoes that are decimating the Midwest right now. Okay. Now notice we've got our tornadoes. We've got our stations. I've got uh, the North American Nexrad radars turned on, and I have the animated turned on. I'm going to go into full screen mode here and show you. This is about a two-hour composite of everything that has been emitted by these stations. So as you can see, uh, as, I, as I toggle this slider or this slider, I get more or less. Here we can see if I bring them together and move them as one, we can actually see the storm moving in real time. But notice how these stations, uh, the white rings around the stations come and go, and sometimes there's like a beam of energy coming out of the stations. When I bring it all out, you can really see the beam from this one in Arkansas shooting from a lot of these different stations, and it kind of makes you wonder what gives. Here I'll show you what those beams look like uh, on another thing, on another uh, Wichita, Kansas base reflectivity, okay? So I scroll down here, these are the tornadoes. Notice this, these beams, it almost, going straight down from the station, it almost looks like a machine gun. You can see in the center here where there's the black dot, that's the station, okay? And notice how that beam is shooting out from the station and it doesn't appear to be making the storm shrink. It almost makes it appears to be making it grow. Here we'll look at another station, Fort Smith, Arkansas. This is on the other side of the storm systems that are causing those massive tornadoes. Notice again similar stations right in the middle, and we see those beams uh, zapping off from the left into the storm system. Okay, these next red stations look a lot like this. As you can see, that's a pretty pretty good size structure there these large staircases steep staircases you know that's like seven stories tall with this large dome at the top inside that dome is an antenna um, the entire country is within the range of these things each one of those pink dots is a station and they all have a range of a couple hundred miles okay here's another view of one uh, it's not going to load up for me. There we go. So you can see, pretty big. It's obviously got a big building next to it that's being used as some sort of power supply. But again, notice how you can literally see on the radar. Here we are in Wichita. 
you can see the beams zapping out from there. And here on Climate Viewer, we can see the same thing. Now, I'd like you to notice the ones, the stations here, like this one, these ones, they've got the white ring, okay? In the last couple of years studying this, I've come to the conclusion, or rather I'm of the opinion, that when you see that white around a station, uh, it is generating localized high pressure. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to turn on the cloud layer here, okay? Just the latest cloud cover around the globe. It'll just take a second to load up. Now notice where the stations, where there are a lot of these stations emitting the white, there are no clouds. And even here in the upper Midwest, let me zoom in a little on there, especially notice this station in southern Nebraska, Grand Island, Nebraska. It's got the white ring around it, and when I turn the clouds back on, come on. Sorry, the computer doesn't like recording the full screen like this. But when I turn my clouds back on, you can see, boom, there's a gap there. Looks like the cloud cover's kind of dying there. Here in, in uh, the upper Midwest, in Michigan, we've got some white rings, and the cloud cover is effectively not there. Same in the East Coast. Uh, so where we've got these white rings, I am of the opinion that they are generating high pressure. Turn our clouds back off and zoom in again. Notice none of these stations in the midst of the storms are emitting that white ring. Okay, We see a lot of these little, these little zappers coming off them. That's SRX. That's the one I was showing you earlier. Notice in this composite image here, if I zoom in, you can really see those beams coming off of that station. Boom, boom, boom. Here, oh, come on, computer. There's the one. That's the Wichita station. Here's that SRX one. Yeah, KSRX, Fort Smith, Arkansas. So we can literally see those beams shooting out there. And here, it's like I've frozen it for the last two hours, uh, all the beams coming off that station. Sure looks like they're shooting right into the heart of that storm. There we can see similar similar lines there. But what I really want to draw your attention to is just the simple fact that a lot of these stations are turned on. They're obviously emitting something which is causing that white ring to form around them. And when I turn on my cloud cover, there are no clouds over those stations that are emitting the white ring. Okay? Again, each of those stations looks a lot like this. It's a NEXRAD weather radar. And as Secretary of Defense Cohen said way back in 1997, uh, the technology exists to alter the climate through the use of electromagnetic waves. Okay, Weather warfare, folks. The technology exists, so why do we have these massive tornadoes raking across the Midwest when for the last 60 or 70 years the US military has been learning how to use this technology and arguably has been using it for weather warfare. Here we see the station in Little Rock. Notice we saw that beam zip out, boom, just real briefly there kind of going northwest right there, bing. Go back into climate viewer, I can actually see that beam here. There it is. So there's our tornadoes. You know, everybody stay safe out there. I think it's pretty important that we ask these questions because the technology exists, right? And why would it be used to harm people, to harm Americans, instead of helping Americans? Okay. This image I just came across today, geoengineering, you know, that's weather warfare. That is climate modification. Notice all of the things listed here. Weather manipulation. It can be used to cause floods, droughts, earthquakes, tsunamis, violent storms, natural disasters, freezing temperatures. Okay, why would anybody want to cause 
horrible earthquake or horrible tornadoes, excuse me, across the Midwest. Well, if you've heard of disaster capitalism, um, you know that there's a lot of money to be made in destroying things and then rebuilding them. There's also a lot of money to be made in manipulating uh, commodities like uh, the corn crop. You know, all these farmers in the Midwest are planting their crops. Their crops get wiped out. Uh, the price of these crops goes up. So there is the potential for people to benefit from causing tornadoes like this and the technology exists so why is it not being used to help people instead of hurting people if you can answer that question you're on to something you'll have a great day take care of yourselves spread the message one love peace